It's that time again. It's time to open up Goldilocks. I'll check your startup device. I already have a few cards that I'm gonna put into the slots there. Probably the most important upgrade will be the uh, memory expansion card here. I have here the Ram Pro 2GS 4 megabyte memory expansion. Four megabytes should be more than enough for anybody using a 2GS. There are eight megabyte expansions out there. Uh, the reason I chose this one is because it's legit from the era. I try to use cards and uh, accessories and things from the time that the 2GS was actually being sold. Uh, but there are some exceptions. There are some things that are just way too difficult. Uh, but this one, I guess I was lucky to find. Here's our fancy memory card, reclining for our viewing pleasure. Uh, we have here the title, Ram Pro 2GS 4 megabyte memory expansion. Ah, the days when 4 megabytes was a big deal. You can see here it's assembled in Mexico, Mexico, and a bunch of chips labeled various ways. I mean, I think they're all the same chip, just, you know, there's so many of them that it makes 4 megabytes. Well, megabyte you too. Now my favorite of the expansions is this Zip GSX. This is actually a CPU enhancement card. This one straight up replaces the CPU that's built into the 2GS. The Zip GSX would like to show off a little bit. It's called the Zip GSX because it's um, really sexy. You can see here uh, there's a slot here for the original CPU that we're going to take from the 2GS. Uh, as I understand it, this is not connected to anything. It's just a holder and uh, various upgrade slots. It looks like you can add tag and data. I have the logo there, Zip Technology. You can have a version there, Zip GSX version 1.02. And this is the part that's going to plug right into the, uh, the CPU slot in the 2GS. Uh, you can see here, it's got all these little pins, like so. And a uh, bunch of little switches here. Uh, these are used to control various features. Here we have uh, a modern SCSI interface card. This will be handy for plugging in things such as hard drives and disk drives uh, that use the SCSI interface. I was not able to find a an old school SCSI card for a reasonable price, so I just went with this more modern GG Labs one, A2 SCSI. Uh, you have their website right there and everything. The modern cards don't excite me as much, but they were feeling left out since the older cards were getting the uh, close-up treatment. So here you have the GG Labs A2 SCSI card. Here's another modern card. This is the Tusonic Stereo Sound card. Annoyingly, the 2GS's built-in sound port doesn't output stereo. So you actually have to use some sort of expansion to access its full capabilities. So that's what this will hopefully help us with. Again, I couldn't find one from the era, but this should do for now. I actually like the look of this two Sonic stereo sound card, um, even though it's not vintage, authentic, but uh, still, good job. Uh, Good job, folks, for designing that. Now let's open her up and upgrade those guts. So here we are again inside the Apple 2GS. Uh, the first video goes over how to get to this point, but uh, once you're here, it's quite easy, really. We gotta just locate our memory expansion slot right here, like so. Really, it can only go one way. And we just kinda have to work that in there. All right, nice and nice and uh, snug. These uh, contacts here along the uh, ends are quite stiff, so sometimes it takes quite a bit of forcing. A little wobbly there, but uh, that stands to reason. Uh, let's do the Zip GSX next. That's gonna be a little trickier. As you might remember, our CPU is this chip right here. It's just in a little slot there, so all we have to do is sort of wedge it out a little by little. We'll put this part of this tool right in there. 
between the little plastic plug and the chip itself. I'll wedge it a little bit on this side and we'll wedge it a little bit on this side as well. It's uh, quite stiff. Oof. Well, that's one way to take out your CPU. Pins are a little bent. Um, prefer not to do that, but sometimes it happens. Uh, it shouldn't be too difficult just to bend those right back. Now, if you remember, we have this uh, slot here for the original uh, CPU. So we'll slot that in before we uh, put this guy right here. And just for aesthetics, why don't we point it in the same direction as all the other chips? We'll just put that right there like so. And uh, make sure all the pins are all lined up. Looks pretty good. So I'll just push that in. That'll probably be just as difficult to get out of that slot next time I want to downgrade. Now there's really only one slot that the Zip GSX can fit into, and that is slot three, I believe. You gotta make sure those pins are lined up to the uh, CPU spots there. And then uh, once I have it lined up, gotta push that in. Ooh, there we go. Okay, and there you have it. Zip GSX. Next up, we have our two Sonic stereo card. Put it right next to that slot two. And by the way, the slot that you put these into doesn't really matter for the most part. Um, I shouldn't say that. Some cards do care where you put them, but uh, most, they'll, the user manual will usually tell you if it, if it has to be in a specific slot. But anyway, I've never had any problems. Uh, I see here this connector. We need to put that actually right here in this spot next to the memory card. Carefully slide that in. And there's our beautiful stereo card. And last but not least, we have our SCSI, SCSI card. So that one we'll put in slot seven. Um, this one will need to use a, uh, one of these rear IO ports. Uh, so we'll have to see where that might actually fit best. Uh, let's see, we could probably fold it to fit right here. So to remove these rear um, panels, you just have to twist these little metal tabs here, like so. See how it's vertical compared to the rest of them? That loosens it so that, let me see, I'll put down our SCSI here. Got to actually pull it out like so, Oop, and it falls right out. Take these little screws out here. I declare, I do declare. What, what do you declare? Okay, so let's fold this ribbon cable around all of our other cards here. Okay, there we are. I think it might matter which slot you use for this one, just because it actually controls discs but I'm not sure about that. Don't quote me on that. This works for me. <laughs> Looks like everything is good. All right, I think it's time to close her back up. Hide your shame, Goldilocks. So one thing that I actually forgot to do is plug in that stereo card. Since it doesn't come with a external I.O. panel, uh, you actually have to run a cable from the inside of the 2GS to the outside. So you have to plug it in uh, right there, and actually uh, I'm going to move it to a different slot just because I want to have as little of the cable running through the computer as possible. Let's try slot 5 since uh, that way it'll have nice clearance. Get in there. There we go. It's just a, you know, your standard, uh, uh, I don't know, what uh, three and a half millimeter I want to say. Let's stick that right in here. All right. And I will thread that out through uh, one of our open slots right over here. Okay, now that we've put her back together, we can uh, run the full test. Let's see if everything works as expected. Check startup device. Here we are. And we can see that the largest selectable RAM disk is four megabytes. Next up is the load runner test.
Oh dear, that is way too fast. Oh my god! Okay. Clearly something is happening to that CPU. So now that the 2GS is where it should be in terms of power, let's really put it through its paces. Let's try loading the GSOS. Now we're really going to see what she can do. Yes! Goldilocks agrees. Thanks for watching and please like and subscribe.